Hey guys, I'm Patrick Hall with fstoppers.com and today we have five different neutral density filters from a variety of manufacturers and I'm gonna put them to the test to see which one I would recommend buying. So over the years, I've seen so many arguments online and I've gotten so many emails from manufacturers that are claiming to have the best neutral density filter. Um, they claim that theirs are the sharpest or that they have the least vignette or that they have the best color rendition. So this idea made me pretty curious and I thought, why don't I get five different brands of filters, bring them into the studio and do a very objective test where I can match them all up with the exact same settings, the exact same light and see actually how these perform side by side. So let me first tell you guys what a neutral density filter is. If you don't know, a neutral density filter is just a filter that you put on the front of your camera and it decreases the amount of light hitting your sensor. Now, why would you want one of these in front of your camera? Well, there's pretty much two or three applications that people use them for. Either they're trying to shoot wide open with a very big aperture and they want to use studio lights, so they want to shoot outdoors and they want to reduce the amount of light hitting the sensor while still maintaining a wide aperture like 1.4, 1.8, maybe 2.8. So these are really common for shallow depth of field headshots and portraits and that sort of thing. People also primarily use these for landscape photography. And the reason you would want this for landscapes is that you can go out and shoot with really, really long exposures. We're talking 30 seconds to 10 minutes. And what this will do is it'll allow your water to become really smooth. It'll allow all the clouds in the sky to kind of give that movement look that's really popular. And we got to see this in action recently with Elia Licardi as he went around the world with us shooting landscapes. He uses these a lot. So I was curious to see how much variation there is between neutral density filters across the brands. So for this test, I've gotten five 82 millimeter filters. And what that means is I can mount this on our Tamron lens, which uses an 82 diameter filter ring. Um, these come in all different sizes, so you could buy different ones depending on what lens you have. We got the six stop variety, which is probably a little heavy for studio work and for headshots, but this is a really nice density if you're going to be using it for landscapes. Um, the five brands that I have, I have one from Hoya, I have one from Tiffin, I have one from Format High Tech. This one is a B and W filter, and this one's made by Breakthrough. This is the Nanotech filter. Um, basically, we wanted to have a large variety between a bunch of popular brands and a large price range. So I think the cheapest one we have here is about a hundred bucks and then they go up to about $250. So I wanted to see, is there actually a difference in quality that you can notice in real raw files between the hundred dollar filter and the $250 filter. Now for this test, I'm going to do things very differently than what I've seen online. And what I see online is most people go out to some beautiful landscape setting and then they put the filters on and they try to test them and then bring them back to the studio and see if there's any color cast. The problem I have with that is one, I don't have an amazing landscape to go shoot right now. And two, I feel like there's so much variety in the light that's coming out of the atmosphere, even over a five minute period. You might have clouds blocking the sky. You might have uh, just a little bit difference in time that's gonna contribute to different looks in the uh, lighting on your scene. So what I thought was, why don't we shoot this in the studio? Why don't we make this as simple as possible with the most consistent light that we have? So for this shoot, I'm gonna be using a Pro Photo D1, and this light is going to be set up, it's right above me here, just hitting this wall. And because we're using the studio light, I can feel confident that the light is going to be the exact same frame by frame. So let's talk about the settings that I have on the camera really quickly. I did two different controls. I did one was just an ambient control where I set the camera to F8, ISO 400, and one 1 25th of a second. And we turned off all the lights in the studio and just took one control frame. That one, of course, is completely black, which tells you that there is no extra light contributing to our scene. And I'm going to set this at level four for the control. Once we add the neutral density filter to our camera, we're going to add six stops of neutral density light cutting material in front of the lens. So that means I'm going to have to bump up my strobe by six stops. So if we're at level four for the test, we're gonna be at full power level 10 on our strobe once we start testing the neutral density filters. So for the first test we're gonna look at right now, this is the white balance test. This is a color test. This one's really important because every manufacturer claims that their filters are as 
color neutral as possible, and we're gonna see if that's actually true. Now for this test, I have set the white balance on my camera at 5,000, and I have shot in RAW, and the reason I've shot in RAW is because I'm going to do a few more tests where we actually change the white balance based on the image itself. But for now, we're gonna lock everything down to 5,000, and we're gonna go through these each and see how the color has changed. So as you can see in this example, this first one is Hoya, and it has a very cyan shift compared to our control. The next one is Tiffin. This one has a cool white balance as well. The format High Tech is very cyan, almost has a green color to it. And the B plus W, this one's actually warmer in color. So you can see these are all very, very different. And for our last one, the Breakthrough, to me, it almost looks the most similar to our control. So I have to say, looking at all of these images, I'm going to give the Breakthrough filter the winner for the white balance test if we lock down the white balance to 5,000. For this next test, I wanna see what happens if we actually adjust the white balance with the white balance dropper in Lightroom and see if we can make all of these look identical. And if we can do that, then I think your colors are gonna come out the same over all of these filters, even though they're captured a little differently at 5,000. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take five pictures, I'm gonna bring them into Lightroom, and then I'm going to use our gray card from the F-Stoppers flash disk that we have back here and I'm gonna use the color picker in Lightroom to pick a very specific spot on the gray card, and then that's going to neutralize all the color shifts, and hopefully all of these pictures will look very identical once we've adjusted for color. So once again, let's compare the control to each one of these. Let's start with the Hoya. As you can see, the Hoya filter, it's a little bit warmer than the control, but it looks pretty similar. The Tiffin, it's also warmer than the control. If we move over to the Format High Tech, it's warmer, but to me, this has the most similar looking white balance and color to the control of anything we've seen yet. B plus W, this one's warmer, but very, very close. This is a toss up with the format high tech filter. And now the breakthrough, this one's warmer like Hoya and Tiffin as well. So I think, in my opinion, the format high tech, the B plus W and the breakthrough have the best color when compared to the control. But again, they're not really that different. I don't think you would really see that big of a difference in a complex landscape photograph. Now, I think this test is really good for those photographers who want a very simple workflow and you want to use a gray card like we have here, or you might have a more complex color checker. Obviously, we could make these files all look identical if we really started tweaking every single setting, but I wanted to make this really simple and just see basically what the differences were with the white balance color checker in Lightroom. Now, one thing I did notice while going through all five of these filters was that the exposure was a little different. And so I thought maybe I should balance out the exposure and do one more test with the white balance checker. So I did that. And what I found was that these were all slightly off from the actual number of stops that they claim to be. These all claim to be six stops. They all were technically six stops, but for the Hoya, I found that this was a fifth of a stop more dense than what it advertises. The Tiffin was almost three-fourths more dense than what it says, so it's almost a seven-stop filter. The Format High Tech, it was 0.1, so that's like a tenth of a stop more dense. The B&W was a third of a stop more dense, and the Breakthrough actually needed no change in exposure, so to me, it was the most perfect, true six-stop filter of all of them. After making these adjustments in exposure, I found that the white balance test really wasn't affected that much, so Really what I found was that some of these filters just have slightly more density. They all have more density than six stops, so you might actually find that as a benefit if you're looking for long exposures. But be aware, four of the five are actually a little more dense than the six stops that they advertise. One other test I felt like I needed to run with this was to test the vignetting. Now these are all very, very thin filters. Um, I would say they're all about the same. Maybe this breakthrough might be a little thinner. Um, the glass looks all about the same, but some of them have a little bit more of a lip. In the case of the Format High Tech, you can't mount a filter on top of this one. So while it's about the same thickness, it does have a smaller lip on the side sticking out from the lens. So let's run through this real quick. Just so you know, I am shooting at 24 millimeters on this lens, which is the widest that this lens goes to. It's pretty good for landscapes. 
If you had a lens that shot even wider, you might actually see more vignetting than what you're about to see in these example photographs. So again, here is the control image. You can see there's a very slight bit of vignetting. That's probably because we're shooting at f8 and we are shooting at 24 millimeters. But once I start adding these filters, you'll see that they all add just a little bit of extra vignetting to the image. From this vignette test, I found that the format high tech had the most vignetting. The next highest vignetting was from the B plus W, and then the Tiffin followed that one. The Hoya had very, very little vignetting, and I actually found that the Breakthrough had the least vignetting of all three. One final test that I thought would be interesting was just to see if any of these filters affect the sharpness of the photograph. So what I did was I exported these out of Lightroom full frame, as high res as they go. This is a D750, so they're 24 megapixels. And then I stacked them all on top of each other in Photoshop. And then I zoomed into the text on the F-stoppers flash disk. And I just started toggling on and off the different layers to see if I could find one of these to be softer, or one of them to be sharper. And what I found was that they all had about the same sharpness. I will say that the Tiffin and the Breakthrough seemed a little bit sharper than the rest, but it was by such a little amount. Another thing that's also worth noting is that the Tiffin image as a whole was more grainy than the other ones, but you also have to remember that this is because this filter was three quarters of a stop more dense, and I had to brighten the entire image by three quarters of a stop. So I think the extra grain from the Tiffin is caused because the exposure was off a little bit because it was a more dense filter. So you're probably asking yourself, what does this all mean? What are my recommendations on these filters? And honestly, I was pretty shocked by our findings. In my mind, I feel like these all do about the exact same thing. Almost all of them could be corrected in post-production to an acceptable level. They were all really, really sharp. And to me, the only thing it came down to is the price difference in these and the vignetting. The B plus W filter, this one's the most expensive. This one is $286, and it actually had pretty big color shifts, and it had quite a bit of vignetting. The cheapest filter here is the Format High Tech, and this one performed pretty well. It did have the most vignetting, but it also doesn't have stackable options. So if you did want to put a polarizer, or you did want to put something else in front of this lens, you can't do that at all. So I think I would take out the Format, and the B plus W from mine, just because one doesn't have a stacking option and the other one's the most expensive and they kind of did poorly in the vignette test. From the last three, I mean, it's kind of a toss up. I really like this breakthrough filter. This one's actually $179, so it's not the cheapest filter, but it's kind of right in the middle. It's got a very thin profile. The other thing I like about this filter is compared to the other ones, this is the only one that has these little grooves on the side, and this makes it really easy to grab and twist on and off your lens. I think it's a really nice feeling filter, and it's still very, very thin. Um, so I think when it's all said and done, these are all pretty similar. I don't think you can go wrong with any of them, but I do feel like the Breakthrough filter was the winner. It had the best white balance. It had the least vignetting. It was sharp and it's at a good price point. So there you have it. This is the studio test on six stop neutral density filters. This is an extremely important filter if you do landscapes because unlike other filters that you might add to your camera, this one actually makes a huge difference. This is the one that's going to allow you to get really, really long exposures and get those really cool blended skies and water looks in your images. So you're definitely gonna wanna have a few of these in your bag. You might want one that's a little less powerful. And then if you want really, really long exposures, you might even want a 10 stop filter. But from this test, I feel pretty confident that you can color balance all of these images with any filter that you use, and you're gonna get really great results. I don't see all the hype in saying that one is color neutral and one's not, and this one's sharper. To me, they all came out kind of looking the same. So. If you guys wanna see some animated GIF files that I've done where it shows the progression of all of these tests, you can go to the link below in the description and make sure you subscribe to fstoppers.com because we produce content like this every single day.